Okay. Well, we, um, if you want to, we could probably get started with any questions you have. Yeah, you are? Okay. I think um, it's... Multiple choice number of projects. Oh, say it again. The whole thing or just before. Which one? For the practice test? For the unit test? Yeah. Unit test, and uh, what number is it? Um. Oh. Hi again. Are you there? Sorry, my computer is going black. That's okay. Um, multiple choice number four. Number four. Okay. Let me pull up the. Uh... Okay. So it was this right here. Catalyst increases the rate of a chemical reaction by. Yeah. That's the one. Okay. So it might help it if I drew out. Just real quick. Uh, okay. So All right, so if we have this graph and we have potential energy over here and we have sort of reaction coordinates right here. And so it kind of comes and then it goes up and over and then it comes down here, let's say. Okay. And so, you know, obviously right here, this is the delta H, let's say, or, or delta whatever. Um, and then this is the activation energy. Okay. And so then what happens is we get a catalyst and uh, let me change colors. Okay. Um, and right here, we have like A, B plus C. And then up here we have A attached to B attached to C. And then down here we have um, a plus B C. So, so before we had this, we had one one reactant with two things and another reactant, and then it's it is in the process of passing the B to the C. Basically, on the other side, it's totally separated. And when we talk about the potential energy, the catalyst really affects right here, right? So we're talking about right here, and because of that, if we're talking about reaction coordinates on this side are the reactants. Okay, and this side are the products, and the catalyst has nothing to do with reactions or products, so that's why A and B are out. D, increasing the frequency of collisions. It doesn't increase frequency. A catalyst, catalyst gives an alternate pathway for activation energy. And so more molecules have enough energy, not that there are more collisions. Okay. 
So that's why the answer is C. This is the activated complex right here. That's much easier when it's drawn out. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that. I wish I would have done that earlier. Or you could also call it the transition state. And for our purposes, they're basically going to be the same thing. Okay. So that makes sense on number four there? Yeah. Okay. Amanda, welcome. We just have done one question so far. And we can do, obviously we're going to do more, but um, while Amanda's getting set up, uh, Marina, did you want to ask another question? Um, actually, I do. I had a lot of trouble like trying to figure out number, multiple choice number 10. Like, I was so confused. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd be happy to go through that one. Let me go to the, first I'll screen share the test itself. I thought I had Catalyst in... Like uh, intermediates down, but then when it came to the test, I was really confused. Oh, okay. All right, we'll talk about that. Um, so we're looking at number ten, right, on multiple choice. Yeah. Okay. So the proposed steps for this reaction between cerium and thallium are represented above the products of the overall. So they want to know what the products. So basically, what's happening is they're taking these three reactions and canceling out everything that is the same. So let me show that on the bamboo. I wish I could do it right on the on the test, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet. So I'm gonna rewrite them as such. So I have cerium four plus plus MN two plus goes to Ce3 plus plus Mn3 plus, the next equation was Ce4 plus plus Mn3 plus goes to Ce3 plus plus Mn4 plus. And then finally, Mn4 plus plus thallium, just a single plus, gives us thallium3 plus plus Mn2 plus. And so for this one, all you had to do is cancel out all the things that were the same on both sides. So for example, here's an Mn3 plus, that goes away because this Mn3 plus goes away. Uh, the Mn4 plus goes away, the Mn4 plus goes away. Uh, Mn2 plus goes away, Mn2 plus goes away, and you're left with two Ce4 plus plus thallium plus goes to 2 Ce3 plus plus thallium 3 plus. So these are your products. And so looking at the reaction, cerium 3 plus and thallium 3 plus, that was A. Okay. okay. All right, and so what, and so when we look at that, um, and, and to take this one step further, we talk about intermediates and um, intermediates and um, catalysts. You have to look at the first equation. Number one tells you the catalysts, if there are any catalysts. Okay. So did anything cancel out that was added in the first step and then a product at the end and remains unchanged? And if you had to take a guess, which one would you say? Sorry, what? For, for the catalyst, which one in the first step goes in as a reactant and then comes out as a product in the final step and remains unchanged? And, and is not in the final overall equation. Do we have something like that? Do you, do you follow what I'm asking? I'm like cutting out right now. Okay. <clears throat> Let's just cut to the chase. Well, MN. When you're talking, you keep it out. Okay. MN2 plus 
is a reactant in first step product in last step not in overall equation. Okay? Then uh, blue two intermediate okay produced in early step zoomed in the later step. Not in overall. Okay. Um, I think I'm good right now. Okay. Amanda, do you have questions? Um, I'm just looking over my uh, test. Okay. Do you still have the paper from when you did the number four for Marina? Yes, I do. Can I see it? Yes, you may. Thanks. Sure. So, the the um, what we have going on here is that. This is potential energy versus reaction coordinates showing that you have A, B plus C and you get to the top of the curve and it's A bonded to B bonded to C because they're in a, in a situation, in a transition state. This is the activated complex. The B is moving from the A to the C and then it comes down to the product side with A plus B, C. And so the catalyst affects this little hill in here in the center and it lowers the activation energy. It did nothing to the reactants. It did nothing to the products. So an A and B cannot be your choices. Another one says it, it incre increases collision frequency, and that's not possible because a catalyst is an alternate pathway for the activation energy, so it lowers it, so more molecules have sufficient energy, but it doesn't increase the number of collisions that occur. So C is the only one that really works because it is talking about the lowering the the potential energy here for the, um, it's lowering the potential energy there for that activated complex. Do you 
multiple choice seven. I would be delighted. Let's see. Seven. Okay. Let's share that one. So according to the rate law for the reaction, an increase in the concentration of hydronium ion has what effect on this reaction? So um, it's a we have the rate law up here where each of them are first order, so we know they have effect. If you increase the concentration of hydronium ion, the rate of the reaction increases, which makes sense. If you increase on the right side, it's going to increase on the left-hand side. Um, there is no equilibrium constant. They're tricking you there. Since there is no equilibrium constant, C and D are incorrect. And then as far as B is concerned, the rate of reaction decreases. That's not possible because if you can increase concentrations here, then it goes, it, 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 the words are escaping me. It will affect the rate of reaction is what I'm trying to say. Um, that's the whole point of when you establish first order or second order or zero order that when you increase a concentration that it increases the rate of a reaction. You know, first order, if you double it, then the rate will double. And so we know that if we increase the concentration, we're going to increase, especially when it's in the rate law, it's going to increase the rate of the reaction. All right, thanks. Sure. Can you go over? Go Can over. Down the multiple choice. Which one? I'm sorry. Multiple choice number two. Number uh, two. Two C. Two C. Oh. Oh, multiple choice? Oh, two, okay. This one right here, relatively slow rates of chemical reaction are associated with, 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 which, with which of the following? Um, that if... Uh, on the free response. Oh, free response, sorry. No, it's okay. Two uh, C. Oh, the presence of nickel causes an increase in reaction rate. So we ended up making each of these two. I'll just change that right now. So what ended up happening with 2C is that you couldn't just say, oh, a catalyst was present. You had to say that a catalyst was there and it lowered the activation energy. Okay? And that more often, or not more often, just more molecules have the needed energy when they collide, so the reaction rate increases. So you had to talk about the fact that it was going to lower the activation energy or give an alternate pathway, you know, basically to give, so that they would be able to get to the products or that the, you know, when the, that the reactants would be able to get on there and, and that your, your reaction would have a lower, lowered activation energy. And then the second point was awarded for saying that um, now they'll have sufficient energy and their collisions will be more effective. So that's how you would get two points. That makes sense. Are we supposed to know that metallic nickel is, acts like a catalyst? Yes. Uh, early on, and I thought I repeated myself, but the metals and things like that are um, used as catalysts. That's something like, I think I used platinum as the example that you can put in platinum and then if you then powdered it, you would not only have a catalyst, but you would have a catalyst with greater surface area. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Could you do multiple choice number two? Oh, sure. On multiple choice number two, relatively slow rates of a chemical reaction. So this is I touched on this briefly, but I was I tried to put a lot of emphasis on it. Like this ties in some different concepts that when you have a when the reaction rate's not happening very quickly, 
you probably have some strong bonds in there, like they're not giving up. You have more electronegative elements that are creating these strong bonds in there. It's hard to break them apart. If it's slow, we know that A is not possible because a catalyst would probably increase the rate of a reaction because more there'd be more reactions that have sufficient energy. If there was a high concentration, we know that would increase the rate of a reaction. And D, a low activation energy means that more molecules are having it. So A, B, and D automatically are not the right answer because all three of those make for a higher reaction rate. So C is the right answer because it's strong bonds. Oops. Um, the converse of this would be to say, oh, relatively high rates of a chemical reaction are associated with, you could say, weak bonds in reactant molecules because they're easier to get to, to, to break apart or start your reaction. So that's why number two, C, was correct. Does that make sense? Yeah, thanks. Okay, sure. Um, say that one more time. She was asking if the retake is going to be hard or easy. Well, you know, I was just looking at it and I feel like there are parts of it that might be a little bit harder. Um, I would say that the general feel to it though is it's is that it's a little bit easier because the majority of it is calculations, like the free response. Um, I would encourage you to, to make sure that you go back and study, but like when you're, you're given data to identify the order of the different reactants compared to the reaction rate, um, I would say be able to identify the overall rate loss. So the same idea, like you're given data, like let's say, do I have one of those? And it's not really like that one. I'm trying to think of, maybe I should have gotten the practice. Let me see if I've got the practice test. Um, let me share the practice test and see if that, if I can point out a couple. Okay, can you guys see the practice test? No. Oh, no, I can. Now you can? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so like number one here in the multiple choice, being able to identify the rate law from the, you know, being able to determine that step. And then, you know, given this step, you would have to find K. Like, so if you're given number one in the multiple choice, let's say as a free response, that you would from that be able to figure out what the order is of A and B, be able to figure out the value for K, and then maybe given another experiment like number four, where you had initial and final, or I'm sorry, the initial concentrations of each, that you would be able to find the initial rate for experiment number four. So kind of the manipulation of that. Does that make so, sense? So it won't, so it'll be a little bit different than the actual test. Like we won't have all the written portion kind of at the end. Well, you will, there will be, oh, this is like, let's pretend like number one is a free response and there's like five parts to it. Okay. That's what it would look like. Uh, okay. So that would be, that would be one of the free response. There would be another free response that, um, Another, let me see if there's another free response. I would definitely go back through the practice test if I were you guys. I'd say that there's parts of the practice test that are definitely similar to the to the test we have, or to the retake. Okay. Um, oh, here we go. Um, on letter B of kinetics free response, Roman numeral three, with the mechanisms being able to identify um, if the mechanism works, you know, what does it mean if it's the slow step, being able to identify an overall rate law, 
being able to identify if you have a if a catalyst and an intermediate is present. Okay. Okay, so that is that's a part of that. And then um, oh knowing your units. Knowing your units for if you were asked to find the rate constant k, that you would be able to find the units for k. That's going to be really important. Including units is going to be really important. Um, yeah. Good. I would say Go I. Ahead, Rob. Oh, say that again. I said that's what I got. I got Rob. I got units. I didn't put units on accident, so I got put. Oh, okay. Yeah. Please remember to include units. Um, make sure that you know your integrated rate law as far as identifying you know what is the integrated rate law for zero first and second order knowing what produces a straight line graph for zero first and second order um, reactions that's going to be important um, you're going to have to draw a line on a graph again it's going to be not quite as big but you're going to have to do that Um, there's a couple questions about mechanisms and finding intermediates and catalysts and the products. Oh, there's a half-life question too. Yeah. So like a multiple choice or a free response? Multiple choice. Okay. Which means that it could be something similar to, well, not exactly. It's kind of like five. Like to be able to figure out five, you don't have to find if it's okay. you don't you don't have to determine the order. You just have to figure out the half life. And so, um, like five on the like on the multiple choice. Ah, it's not quite like this though. Like, what is this? Roman numeral four, five. Let's see. What does it say? The decomposition of a certain number over a period of thirty-four hours. So. Well, just remember this. Here, let me just do this. Uh, I'm going to share the... Okay. So... Oops. I would say this. When you're doing half... Uh, now, we'll, we, this is like nuclear chem all over again, okay? And so if you're given numbers like mass, so we'll just call this half-life. If you're given mass and you're given, you know, I don't, I'm having a hard time, 48 grams of something, okay? And, um, and you want to know... Um, It's going to go through five half lives, something like that. And how do you know it's five half lives? Um, probably because, oh, I don't know how, how you determine this. I'm having a hard time just <laughs> on a whim, kind of coming up with an example. But let's say it goes through five half lives. What that means is that after one half life, this goes to 24 grams. After a second half life, it goes to 12 grams. After a third half life, it goes to six grams. Fourth half life gives you three grams, and finally the fifth half life gives you 1.5 grams. All I did was divide by two a bunch of times. Okay? So, and if each half life is two minutes, what's the total time? Well, there are one, two, three, four, five half lives, and each one is two minutes, so. 5 times 2 equals 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we're going to have 1.5 grams left over. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. That's all that... It, don't let... don't. What, I'm, I, what, what I want to communicate is don't let Half-Life fake you out in the, free, in the multiple choice because that's all that it is, is this dividing by 2 or multiplying by 2 a situation. I don't have a problem with that. Good. Static right. number five. It's like number five? It, it is a little bit. 
Number five is kind of mm-hmm. unusual. So for number five, I did it, and I see what I did now. But I was kind of wondering if you could explain it. Sure. See if maybe that would be like a better understanding. Yeah. So let me share. It's obvious that the half life is twelve hours. So right. Obviously, you know, it's B or E. Oh. Okay. So if you've got that, let me. Well, let's do the. I should go back to the bamboo then. Actually. So what ends up happening? And this is odd a little bit. Okay. So. To be able to figure this out, if um, time is usually here, and we're going to go up to 24 hours, and it's so increments of four. You use the graph too. That's what I did. Yeah. Four... 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, okay? And if this is 100% right here, then this is 50, and this is 25. Let's see, so that means that 75 is going to be right around here. Let's see, that means that 62 would probably be 50. I'm probably not going to do this right. Let's say this is 62 and 50, and then 38 would be somewhere right in here. Let's pretend. Doesn't feel right, but oops. And then 31. And then 25. Okay. So at zero, we had 100. So I'm going to put a different color on this. Let's make it, um, let's make it a bright blue. Okay. So that's where it is originally. And then at four hours, it's here. And then at 62, it's right here. And then at 12, and right here. And then at 16, it's at 38, and 20, it's at 31, and then, it, okay. So what ends up happening is we get this line, oops, I cannot draw with this clearly. So, and it's leveling off quickly there. Um, so, when you look at that, like if it's if it's um, first order, okay. So if it's zero order, you're gonna have a straight line, right? Can we agree with that? I don't know if that's gonna be very good. So that's zero. This is, and, and I'll have to be totally honest with you. I disagree with this question. I think it's a poorly written question. Um, then if we go orange, then what would happen is there would be a, there would be, gosh darn, there would be a slight curve here. <sighs> My drawing is awful. It would, if first order would be, give you a slight curve and then the second order gives you a bigger curve. So, I mean, it's like one of those things where it's like this, you know, and it's, and it's awful. I don't think it's I don't think it's good at all. Like I would not put number five on one of my actual tests. What I cared about more was that you were just able to identify a half life. But so it's so it's going to be well. So what I'm I'm not drawing this very well. So actually, what I should have done is this. Let me get rid of that. Should have just kept the blue line. So first order was the one that you had there, and then second order would be like this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Not very well. You're being very nice to me. <laughs> it's... No, because that's basically what I had. Oh, okay, good. But I just wanted to make sure that's like, how like you would do it or whatever. I yes. Sure 
yeah, I would have just drawn a quick graph and because it's difficult to tell just looking at numbers. Yeah. Okay. Okay, do you guys have any other questions? I don't think so. Okay. okay. Well, if you guys study the, go back and study the unit test, go back and study the, the practice test, um, you know, and then if there's anything from those other worksheets that you, you know, want to take a look at, but other than that, I can't think of anything else to, to go over with you. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, get a good night's rest, and I'll uh, see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. 6 30? 6 30. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.